Hey my friends, I'm back and this is a video on gout weed. You don't hear much about gout weed, but it's very, very invasive. You only hear about it when people want to really complain about it. So today I'm going to teach you how this invasive plant is actually going to help feed you. We're going to harvest some today. I'm going to have to dry some. The best time to do this is before it goes to flower. There's a little bit of literature and a little bit on gout weed. Um, ground elder is another name. So I'm going to, uh, we're going to bring it in the kitchen. We're going to cook this up a little, stir fry it up, steam it, see what's the best way, how it tastes. Um, we'll go from there. And gout weed is for gout. There's a lot of stories about gout and I'll go into that later about where it got its name from. So today I'm on my cousin's property and we are going to harvest a bunch of this gout weed today. I'm going to store a lot of it. I do drink it as a tea. That's great for that, you know, inflammation in the joints, hands, you know. I'll go through and get you more details on other uses of gout weed. But this is what gout weed looks like before it flowers. It does shoot up a, a, a flower later on. Gout weed, folks. There she is. And the stems are kind of scooped out in the middle. do some harvesting right now. Hey everyone, so I'm just gonna show you how you do like a fresh tea of the uh, gout weed. It's just gonna be a small little clip just to, so I just kind of roll it up, put a little bit in there, pour your hot water over it, let it sit. This is from the fresh leaves. And this is from the dried, this is the dried leaves. We're just gonna let that steep and come back to it later. See the difference in color. And that's it. Just let it sit, stir it up, come back to it. Usually I put a cover over the top of it, a little lid or a plate or whatever you wanna use for a lid. Just to hold in, you know, all the flavor and good stuff. You want to let the essential, the good essential oils, I should say. I'll let the essential oils come out. I just kind of use a lid like that. And we'll come back to that. See you in the videos. Hey, my herbal friends. I am back doing a video for you, and this one is on gout weed. So I'm going to show a lot of pictures along with this. We're going to talk about the plant, and then I'm going to go in and I'm going to show you how to eat this. So this is gout weed also known as bishop weed. Um, it's a Latin name is Agapodium podagraria. It's ground elder. I think a lot of people know, know of it as being called ground elder because people use it as um, a ground covering in their garden, in some of their gardens, or alongside their homes, driveways, you name it. Uh, the medicinal uses is very antibacterial. It's used for gout, sciatica, rheumatism, kidney stones, hemorrhoids, inflammation, water retention, and all parts of it are diuretic. Uh, you can make a poultice with it in the leaves and the roots, and you can lay it on the hips for sciatica. It helps to reduce the swelling and pain. So it's really high in uh, minerals. Um, it's high in copper, vitamin C, vitamin A, iron, uh, manganese, calcium, magnesium, potassium, Notice a lot of your wild edibles really are so high in vitamin C and minerals that we just you can't ignore it because they're life saving. So um, you want to just caution when you harvest the leaves. You want to harvest these leaves before uh, they bloom. And I'm going to show you. I found I found a little bloom starting here. Where did you go? Well, we'll find her. Here she is. Uh, here's a bloom. Do you see that way down there? 
Let's see if I can focus in on there. So here's a, a bloom getting ready. It's getting ready to shoot up a bloom. And of course I'm doing this in the springish time. We're in May. So that's going to turn into a long elongated um, flower that's going to start shoot, pushing out its flowers. And when it flowers, it's an umble flower, which that the flowers just, the seeds will just spread. So if you want to take control of this because it's very invasive, uh, you need to cut it back before it flowers. And they do, they'll, they'll, they have runners underneath, they have rhizomes. So I know a lot of people have a lot of problem with gout weed, but remember it's also a staple food and it's very highly valuable to eat. So um, you want to harvest the leaves like I said before it blooms and then when it blooms the taste, is do, the taste does change and it also turns into more of a laxative so it will give you some diarrhea if you eat it after the, it starts to bloom and have flowers so probably don't do that <laughs> unless you really need it. Uh, it tastes like spinach and I think most of your wild edibles do taste like a spinach, parsley, uh, the carrot green tops, which I've done a video on that, it can also, um, and celery. I mean, most of your, some of them usually taste like a celery. Uh, you can eat the leaves, the shoots, the blossoms, the seeds, and the buds. But remember, you can't really eat, you can eat them, but if you're eating them after it flowers, it's going to turn into a different, it just changes it. You can eat them raw or cooked. Ground elder was brought over by the Romans as a food staple and it spread countryside. It's also, it's a great staple food. I mean, we can't say it's not. Uh, so if you're eating it, you're, <laughs> you're taking control of it by eating it every, every year. Um, so you can put it in pestos. You can cook it in any recipe that calls for greens like spinach or, or chard. And like I said, it's a good source of vitamin A and C and iron. So there's a variegated type. Um, it has the white leaves on the tips and it's called a snow on the mountain herb. So you can look these different ones up, Google pictures of them to see what the other one looks like. I don't have that one here, thank goodness, because I already have enough of this here. Um, herb Gerard is another name, Wilder English Master Wart, Axe Ash Weed, Anise Weed. And from, I think it's called anise weed, is I think the seeds taste a little bit like anise seed, kind of like that licorice type. Uh, dwarf weed, bishop weed, white ash herb, garden plague. <laughs> I can see why it's called garden plague. Dog elder, jack, uh, jack jump about. Um, you can make a tea and do two tablespoons of the fresh or dried leaves and pour hot water over it and just steep it for about 10 minutes and then drink it. Um, so, I have eaten it. It tastes really good. I like the taste of it. So, by if you want to eradicate this and get rid of it, don't spray chemicals on your property. That's the worst thing you can really do. I always tell people, you know, you can take and rake, from what I've read too, you can rake leaves about 6 to 12 inches deep over the beds every fall. And you can also... Um, do the same thing for mint because mint will take over like mad not like mint isn't good for you but there's so much of it it takes over and they're they're viney they have rhizomes that go deep and it's so hard to rip it all out and the more you rip it out the more you just encourage new spread you know new growth so um, you can pour these leaves over the beds every fall and also what I would do is put like a um, a drive cloth down over them and cover the leaves with the put the leaves over the drive cloth smothers them out and also mow it before it seeds to stop the spreading if this is if it's taken over your gardens um, the best way is to put mulch and cloth over it to smother it out each year you want to do that every single year pulling them them out like I said before just encourage them the growth so by smothering. Same with Japanese knotweed. I, I don't think I'd ever buy a property that had Japanese knotweed on it. You even, you would have to have a backhoe to dig that stuff out. That I did a video on that. That stuff can go <laughs> 65 feet deep. 
Um, so Japanese knotweed, do it the same way. You can smother it every year, uh, encourage, not encouraging it to grow, um, not walking on it and tracking it everywhere. So uh, then we have some cautions here. So goutweed, if you look at the leaves, it's if you did not have a trained eye, it would look so similar to um, poison hemlock. Well, the umble flowers do. And if you didn't know what you were doing and you thought it was gout weed, it could kill you. So don't mess around with this herb. And if you have these phone apps, a lot of people have these phone apps. If you have a phone app, make sure you have two or three of the phone apps because they're not always accurate. You want to take and do a, a check it on every one of them and then grab a book and look these leaves and look at the leaves and you know really study them and make sure you know what you have so the the gout weed the umble flowers um, I don't have any flowers here to show you because I try not to let it go to flowers so it doesn't keep spreading but I did have them one year that's how I knew I had them when I saw the flowers it kind of freaked me out I'm like oh that looks like poison hemlock but it wasn't so I did a lot of research on it to find out that it was gout weed and I was pretty excited because I love I love herbs that you can you know literally take in and make meals and food out of so the veins of the gout weed leaf they terminate at the tip at the tip of the tooth so that meaning that they terminate at each tip see where the tips are right to the tip right to the tip well where the hemlock leaf veins terminate between the teeth so the hemlock would come in between each tip so that's one another way um, get right down and look at the plant that way um, also I just I know the difference I know what I know exactly what uh, hemlock looks like so I'm gonna pull one up I'm gonna show you also you see how this has a scoop in the middle almost looks like you could put water in and drink water out of it and it's almost like a triangle-ish. If you're touching it, it looks like a tri it feels like a triangle. Hemlock doesn't do that, but hemlock also has purple splotches on the le on the smooth uh, stems, where this does not. So, as again, it spreads by rhizomes. The seeds require cold stratification, meaning stratification means it has to go through a winter of a freeze and same as garlic <clears throat> we put garlic in the fall it goes through a freeze and you can always hold if you forget to plant your garlic in the in the fall you can always put it in dirt in the freezer and then take it out in the sp springtime or no, I'm sorry you can put it in a freezer for a couple of weeks tricking it to believe that it has gone through a winter and then you could plant it so you can get away with that also um, so they go through a winter, uh, has to go through a winter stratification in order for them to even grow. So if you're, if you're smart, you would go through and you would literally chop this all down before it went to seed. Like that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm actually going to harvest some of this and we're going to cook it. And then I'm going to weed whack it all down. I'm just going to weed whack it and make sure it doesn't keep spreading. And actually, you know, I probably won't weed whack it all down. I'm going to harvest a lot of it. So here I, I'm gonna pull this one out so I can show you this is pretty cool here's a little rhizome or I'm not sorry rhizome but it, it's getting ready to do its little flower thing and those are the little umble flowers are getting ready to pop out <laughs> it's hard to do this and look at the same time so those would be the little umble the little umble flowers that'll come out and they'll be long and they'll stick out so um, that's pretty cool. I've only seen, I haven't seen very many of them yet here. Oh, no, there's a couple more. There's a few more in there getting ready to flower. So now is a good time to actually be picking all your ground elder and your, well, gout weed, ground elder, however, whatever way you want to call it and, um, get it ready to chop it down. So we're going to go in the kitchen and I'm going to harvest a bunch of this and we're going to cook it up and I'm going to show you how to cook this and make it in your uh, dishes and I'm not going to do a pesto or anything like that those that pesto is pretty easy everybody knows how to do a pesto but for ground elder this is what you have and make sure that you know what you're picking um, 
one little mistake can be the last mistake you ever make. So with that being said, we're gonna show you how to cook this beautiful wild edible. Don't be afraid of it. Just, you know, make sure you do your, your homework and look at what you're doing and make sure you identify it properly. I have a lot of pictures. I'll have some pictures and um, a couple of small little clips and videos. My cousin has this all over her property. She has 80 acres, almost 80 acres of land. And I go there and I harvest. <laughs> I take it all. <laughs> I have some actually drying right now in my garage. So I can show you that real quick. We can go inside. I could give you a little tour of the what I have drying in here. And so here is the gout weed that I have drying. So the gout weed, oh, let's scroll back here. This has been drying for a couple of days. The, st the stems are still a little, um, they're damp. They're not fully dry. If they're fully dry, they will be crunchy like this. And this still isn't fully dry because when it crunches, see how it still hold, holds together like that and it shouldn't do that. So it's still damp. And I know it's gonna get, it's gonna be raining here soon. So I'm gonna have to dig out my dehydrators and put dehydrators in here just to get this fully dried. Or I'm gonna have to start putting all of this in the dehydrator, my house home dehydrators, my Excaliburs, and it will take like a couple of hours to really dry it all. So you want, when you dry things, you want it to be as green as it was when you put it in, and it should be that green when you take it out. If it's brown or darkened in color, then it's no good. That means it's lost its, it just lost its uh, chlorophyll and probably most of its medicine. Now gout weed is, like I said, great for gout, great for um, people that get the big toe or the feet hurt so bad they can't even walk on it. Uh, it's a diuretic, helps with the bladder. Um, you could, oh, looks like a bird pooped on that one. So you have to go through, <laughs> I probably didn't see that one when I put it in here, but um, so I'm gonna store this and use it in my extracts and have it for tea later on I actually put this in my nettles iced tea once in a while because sometimes the joints get a little sore my knees my elbows and this really helps a lot it really helps you to get around a lot easier so all four of these I have four of these that are full I harvested a lot of gout weed I'm actually gonna go back in another before everything starts to flower and I'm going to hopefully get another round of gout weed I'm not even gonna tell you how much it cost me just to buy a little bit of this gout weed from a company on Etsy. It was really beautiful gout weed. I, it, it was nice. They did a great job with it. They did a great job drying it. They know what they're doing. Um, but if you want to save money, this stuff grows. It's very invasive, very invasive. So I encourage you, if you have it on your property, to start harvesting it and start learning how to utilize it and eat it and use it for your, your own... Uh, medicinal um, apothecary. Um, gout weed is a blessing and in, it's a curse. <laughs> it could be either or, you know, you, you, you'd pick your poison, right? So gout weed, bishop's weed, ground elder. Um, learn your herbs, learn your weeds. We're gonna go in the kitchen now and I'm gonna show you how to cook this up real quick. Uh, it shouldn't take very long. We're only going to do like one dish and then I'll, I'll do a tea, show you what the tea looks like. And uh, there's a lot more history, a lot more. I mean, bishop weed was, um, from what I understand, came from the name from the one of the bishops. And he cured himself of gout with using it and um, he was very young. So back in the day, I don't know what they were eating that would have caused them to be so acidic, their diets. Maybe they were eating too much um, animal products, which can make your body very acidic. Um, so you can do a little Google search. I try to give you more of the medicinal and the wild edible parts and how to eat it, what parts to look to, to gather, parts to harvest, and how to 
um, how to cook it. So you are not really getting a hands-on, but you are getting a hands-on because I am actually doing it for you in the kitchen and showing you. And I try to show you the parts of the plant that are, you know, edible. So that's what I do. Um, I do know a lot of the history, but it's kind of boring to go through a lot of that where you can just do a little Google search and, and look it up and read it for yourself. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on the history part of it all. I want to spend more time on showing you what parts um, that I would be eating or using for medicine. If you want to make an extract out of this, you could just use 80 to 100 proof vodka, make a little quart jar or a half a pint jar, um, stuff it full, um, take your dried leaves, put it in your jar. Um, I've never made it fresh, but I've always made it from my dried leaves and just let it sit for a couple of months and you got yourself a nice extract. If you ever get gout pain, you just take a couple dropperfuls of that or a teaspoon a couple times a day and uh, should help relieve that gout and acts as a diuretic. You get a bladder infection, um, can help to release and push out those toxins. Or if you get a little bacteria in there, like remember this is antibacterial. I'm sure it's got a little antiviral stuff going on in here too to help with anything viral but viral is our own stuff anyways that's usually your own body trying to detox so antibacterial um anti -diur it's diuretic it'll make you pee so peeing is not a bad thing it gets rid of a little excess weight if you're retaining a lot of fluid this is going to help so let's go in the kitchen i'm going to show you how to cook this up and i'm going to show you how to make a meal with it and uh, we'll go from there. I hope you enjoy this video. Um, next video will be right along with this one. You can find me on vermontpureherbs.com is my website. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, my YouTube channel. We're all Vermont Pure Herbs. Make sure you spell out Vermont. It's not abbreviated. And uh, we'll go from there. And we'll see you in the next video. Peace. Hey, everyone. We're back doing a video and this time we're doing it on the gout weed and this is just ginger and garlic from my gardens the ginger was pre-frozen and I thought it out to use it using it in all my cooking so I'm just cooking this up a little bit and I'm going to show you the um, steam I steamed some gout weed Oh, let me tell you the Latin name of the gout weed too. I don't want anybody to be confused on what they're looking at. Um, I said it in the beginning of the video also when I took you out for harvest or show you what the plant looks like. It's Agapodium podograria. Um, I'm sh everybody can say Latin names a little bit differently because of our English language. We're so used to English and not Latin. So if you look up the gout weed, bishop's weed, um, there's plenty of names, uh, ground elder, there's a lot of different names that you can find for this particular plant. It's very invasive, but very edible too, and very medicinal. So people have asked me where I got this from, and uh, I've had this for many, many years. I have just uh, forgot where I got it from. You could probably find one on Amazon. I don't know where I got it from. Probably one of the stores many, many years ago. Over like 12 years I've had it. I like it because it's not aluminum. I don't use aluminum. And uh, I try not to use anything that is metals. I like using um, cast iron and sometimes my nonstick pan. So here is the gout weed. I'm going to throw it in. All I did was chop it up. I like to chop them up because if they are a little tough, they won't be as um, hard to, to chew. This won't take too long. I like to use water to make the steam, just so things don't burn. Always in the wild edibles. Just make sure your temperature is not too high because it'll splatter all over. I've gotten burned before. I'm sure we've all been there. So you can steam it and then take your steam and use it as a pesto so it's not so tough. Or just make sure you harvest your um, 
harvest your greens in the beginning of the spring before they get bigger and you want to do that anyways because you don't want to get them when they're too big because they're tough or before they start to flower if they flower then they turn into more of a laxative type of a plant unless you need that then go for it but uh, I'm sure there's plenty of other things you can use fruit as helping bowels move you don't want to dehydrate So just fluctuate with the temperature, you know, turn it up, turn it down. <laughs> and so what I have done is in the past is with that wild edibles is I have steamed plants and then threw them into the stir fry. We do that with the burdock only because they're very bitter. These are not bitter. You could eat them right from off of the plant. They're not bitter at all. I think it has a little hint of um, parsley and celery. Some people say it tastes like carrot tops. I don't think it tastes like carrot tops. I honestly just think it tastes like a celery and a um, parsley, type of parsley. It kind of looks like a parsley. So that's cooking really nice and I love using ginger and garlic. Uh, I've always done that. My teachers have taught me you know, ginger garlic always puts a lot of nice flavors in your food. You can find wild mustard greens. You can find wild garlic. You can find, uh, definitely find wild ginger. I've found plenty of wild ginger in the past. I have a lot of pictures on wild ginger. And so what you're looking for is it to be tender like spinach. Um, if you're out in the in the wild, in the woods, and of course this grows in the woods too, it just takes off, it goes everywhere. Um, you can find it in the woods also. It was something that you wanted to cook and you, you only had a fire and a pot with you, you could throw it in the pot, find some water, you could just steam it and cook it that way. Um, I have seen it in the woods, my cousin has it in her woods all over, it's because it just takes off. I've seen a lot of pictures with people where it just kind of just takes right off in the woods. Not good. But I uh, discussed how to eradicate it, to get rid of it if it's something you don't want to take over your gardens in the last video. So take a look at the last video. So you see the difference? It's pretty vibrant and green compared to steaming it. It loses a lot of its color by steaming it, but it's still good. It's really tender, soft, you steam it a little bit more. Um, steaming is better with the leaves when they're just little babies. So this is almost done. Probably put a little more water in there. I like doing the water. So you use less oil when you use more water. Oil just makes it greasy. I don't even really like using a lot of the coconut oils, but it is what it is. Coconut gives it a nice flavor. If you can't use coconut oil, you can use other oils. I would err on using butter. Don't use butter. Butter is really, it, it burns it and it turns it into a, a totally different property. So I'm just getting ready to put this on the plate. Um, you can shave up carrots and throw carrots in with this. You can also put, put whatever you want. You can throw this over rice or quinoa and have it as a, a stir fry on top of something. Oh, another thing, I did see a video where a woman, she had put a can of um, tomatoes or Italian tomatoes, just dumped it right in this and had like a, I guess she called it a gumbo or something like that. You can add your vegetables in after, or whatever you want into it, noodles already pre-cooked uh, pasta. So you're getting a lot of vitamins and really great wild edible. So this stage here, they're getting a little overgrown. Uh, it's best to pick these at this stage for drying for tea. I'm gonna show you the tea in a moment.
Remember, you can always find a lot of my videos uh, on Facebook, Vermont Pure Herbs, and all of my videos are always posted on rumble.com, which is a new network, which is a Grassroot Warriors network. I will post that in the video. You'll see that. You can see all of our videos. All my videos will be on the new network and on my YouTube channel. It's a new network that we're doing, that we're, I'm part of. There's a lot of anchors, a lot of other people that are posting really great, fantastic videos. Um, it runs off of donations, so if people want to donate to the network, it really helps. Helps keep us uh, doing all these great videos for you. looks good enough to eat. <laughs> Takes a good maybe five, six minutes to stir fry up when they're tough, little tougher leaves up like this. There are, there were a few um, smaller ones. And I believe if you, when you cut it back, I don't believe new growth is gonna like hurry up and grow right back up. I think the smaller babies that you didn't trim back are the ones that are gonna come up afterwards. So also visit my website. My website is vermontpureherbs.com. Uh, it's a brand new website. I'm s working very hard trying to get the rest of extracts put up on there. Um, all of our extracts are tested in a lab for your safety. And for my peace of mind and your peace of mind. So you can visit the website and you can see more about me on there. There's a little blog on me, on myself and my farm. Um, there, the extracts that are on that are being put on, they're being put on like monthly. I try to put more on every month. So that we have, uh, hoping in the next year that all the extracts should be on the website. So I'm just gonna move this over and put it in a plate. We're gonna dish this beautiful gout weed up so that you can see what it looks like. We're gonna put the steamed on the side Put the steam down the side of it, so you can see the difference with this between the steamed or, and you know I use a little bit of uh, coconut aminos, and coconut amino is uh, let me see, dig it out. Coconut amino just gives it a little flavor. Some people use tamari. I don't use tamari because of the or soy sauce because of the soy, but I have used tamari in the past, but I find it to be a little too much too salty too much salt so there is the gateway dish this is the steamed and the other one is the stir fry and that didn't take very long at all it was actually pretty quick to cook that this is the coconut aminos you could use that um, you just pour a little bit over the top of it to give it a little flavor you can do it on both but it just gives a little flavor because this can be bland by itself, just like, you know, some people like putting stuff on their spinach, a little vinegar. Some people put vinegar on their stuff. So that is it. That is your gout weed little dish that you're making. This is the stir fry. This is the steam. Now let's show you, this is the tea. I had already strained it. It's a very light, light color yellow. I don't have a piece of paper to show you, but uh, this is from the fresh leaves. You, I'm sure if you put more leaves in, it'll be a little darker. Now this is from the dried leaves. I think I'd add a little bit more, but this is the leaves that I had already dried. It's a little more concentrated, that's why. And this, you can see the difference in the two. One is from the dried leaves and this is from the dried leaves and this is from the fresh leaves. You're going to get the same benefits from both. 
You can even see the volatile oil sitting on top. Kind of weird. The oils are from the plant, the fresh plant, where you don't get as you don't get that from the dried. So you know you miss a little bit, but you're still getting great medicine. You sip on that throughout the day helps the kidneys, the bladder, um, removes waste. Okay, you see the tamari, but this is really, really great dish. Like I said, you could put this on rice. You could put this on quinoa. So I hope you like that. This is a shorter vid video compared to what I've done in the past with burdock and dandelion. Dandelion has got a whole lot of food to be made with it. Um, this With this gout weed, you can dig up the roots, the rhizomes, and you can do the leaves as a poultice. You want to chop it up, pour a little bit of hot water over it, and uh, let it cool off, and then use it as a poultice and put it on sciatica pain. You can put it on arthritic pain, put it over wherever you have aches and pains, and just leave it on there. Um, it works the same way, so it obviously has some analgesic properties. So I hope you like this video. Uh, we'll see you in the next video. I'm going to have some little clips here and there in this video here. Uh, along with pictures showing you the the other ground ivy, the the um, the one with the whiter the white leaves, and it's called the snow on the mountain, the wild or English mother war, uh, sorry master wart. Uh, so you'll be able to see both of them, and then I'll have some pictures of the uh, flowers of the gout weed added into the video because I don't have them available right now. I'll just have to show you the, the pictures. And if you have any growing around you, just keep an eye on it and watch it for a whole year. That's what I do when I learn my wild edibles. If I want to learn something, I'll watch it. I'll watch it grow or I'll grow it myself or I'll find it on somebody else's property and I will research it and I'll do at least two years of it before I even think about, you know, doing it as a wild edible. Especially if it's a new one to me. My teachers have, two of my teachers, three of my teachers have passed away. So I don't have them to really rely on as much as I did in the past when I had questions about herbs. So uh, my extended learning has to be on my own knowledge. So if you have questions and you want to learn more about wild edibles, keep watching the videos and share with your friends. And please like the videos because it really helps my business. And we'll see you on the next video. Enjoy. Peace.